water defines the Dutch identity. Much of Holland was reclaimed from the sea. It has the densest network of inland waterways in Europe and a tradition of maritime craftsmanship. A tradition that has led to a leading position in the construction of super yachts. But in order to maintain this position, innovative build and design methods constantly have to be explored and implemented. This insider's guide reveals a glimpse of the secrets and mold-breaking designs that make a yacht truly superb. It's one of the few boats racing with a grand piano on board. Right. That's, uh... <laughs> Welcome aboard, Super Yachts. Fire in the hole! The outskirts of the Dutch harbour town Zwartslaus are the location of a super yacht shipyard that has innovation at its heart. This is the most important thing for, uh, for the next owners. Yeah, when there is no innovation, why, what's the reason to buy a new boat? This is for our life, to change and to control and yeah, innovation is really important. Twenty years ago, Jan decided to set up a yacht building firm and went into business with Louis Humming. They now specialize in the construction of modern, high-performance super yachts. In any job you have, you should have the love for those things you do and for the product you're working with and you're working on. And in our case, it's a uh, it's sailing yacht. The company sees innovation as its mission. Most of their yachts are made of aluminium, but in 2005, the use of super light carbon fiber was introduced. An incredibly strong and light material. It's a revolutionary but difficult method of boat building. Carbon fiber is one of the latest developments in making high performance sailing yachts even faster. How you can do lightweight, how you can do everything smooth on the deck, everything must be faster and faster. Special the hydraulics, the electronics give you so much more uh, yeah, ideas, much more fashion to do everything, yeah. Recently, the team has been working hard on yacht number 3067. At 46 meters long and 9 meters wide, the yacht will be made out of aluminium. A strong metal, but heavier than carbon fiber. So the rest of the ship has to be as light as possible to make the yacht as fast as possible. Although it's an aluminum hull, it will be a lightweight boat. So uh, the interior is, uh, is lightweight. We also have um, a, a lightweight rig, so we went there really to the, uh, to the edge of what's uh, technically possible at the moment. So tin ply technology for the mast and, the, and boom, and also uh, carbon fiber rigging. Hey. Hey Sander. Goeiedag. Hey, ben je er helemaal uit nu met het, uh, met het ja. ankersysteem? Ik zou je nog even laten zien uh, dat hij uh, mooi langs de luikrand uh, beweegt. Ja. The deck has to be very clean. Uh, we have a lot of winches on the deck, but also anchor systems in the old days. You saw the anchors hanging off the bow uh, when uh, uh, we're not in use. But now, uh, yeah, nowadays, uh, we have very special anchor systems with, uh, well, they flip the anchors uh, on the deck. Yacht 3067 is coy about its treasure trove of gadgets, most of which are hidden below deck to create a minimalist look that showcases the vessel's sleek form. Actually, the biggest advantage is from Aluminum above other materials like, for instance, steel is that it is easy to weld, easy to form. That's actually, the, for us as a, as a product manager, the biggest advantage of aluminum above carbon. Aluminum may be the easiest material to work with, but sometimes easy isn't the answer. Project manager Dimitri is charged with delivering the inner wheel. This high-performance yacht will be 33 meters long, 7 meters wide, and is to be made out of carbon fiber a supremely light polymer that can be a challenge to work with. Once molded into shape, it's near impossible to make alterations. Inui is a uh, performance sailing cruiser and on the hull we tried to, uh, we've decided to go for the, the lightest possible construction material and in this case that's, uh, that's a carbon uh, composite. Building a yacht's hull and superstructure in carbon could result in an estimated weight reduction on the hull of 60 to 70 percent compared to using aluminium. 
Dimitri is on his way to visit a subsidiary yard in England that specializes in carbon fiber composites. They are making the carbon hull for the NOE. Tomorrow it's the plan to uh, bring both uh, hulls of the boat outside the shed and put it on top of each other. Building in carbon requires specialist skills. Carbon mats with epoxy resin are used to shape the different components. The components are slowly heated up, making the epoxy resin liquid, so it saturates the carbon. The components are then cured for 10 hours at 85 degrees Celsius. The hull of the yacht has been built in two parts. They will be joined, glued together with carbon mats, and then baked again. The joining of the two halves has to be very accurate to form a solid hull. The bulkheads in the top side of the hull have to fit perfectly into the slots in the bottom side of the hull. When the top side is turned over, they lift it above the bottom side and all those bulkheads should exactly fit inside the slots they prepared in the longitudinals. Today it's time for the two halves to be fused together. Although this shed is especially designed for carbon fiber productions, it's a bit of a squeeze for the 33 meters of the inner wing. Both the top and bottom of the hull are maneuvered outside, where there's enough space to lift them on top of each other. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. But maneuvering the eight-ton topside out of the shed at a difficult angle is too much for one of the platform units. The tire comes off, and it's simply too risky to continue the turn. Good. Any knocks or blemishes to the hull will have to be filled and painted, adding unwanted weight to the high-performance super yacht, so it's carefully secured to the platform before further maneuvering. If you have imperfections on the hull like this, uh, and the construction is finished, we're going to apply the paint system and refair it. The smoother the surface is, the less ferrin compound you need to apply, and that saves weight. It's all about the details, yes, that's true. But the attempt to conjoin the two halves will have to wait until the wheel is fixed. Back in Schwarzlaus, new techniques are constantly developed to improve the sailor's experience. The rudder feedback system uses hydraulics to control rudder pressure, meaning that less strength is required to steer the yacht. It also increases reaction speed, should the owner be feeling competitive. So what we actually try to do is, is create the same systems as, as what you have at smaller boats with cable steering. Cable steering is too difficult to install through the layouts of interior in the bigger boats. So well, we replaced the cables with hydraulic lines. Okay. Many, many years people are asking for a new system. And we tried this for many years to do it electronics. And the boys came with a really simple system, so easy that, yeah, why we don't did it earlier, I don't know. Resist. Yeah, okay, yeah. This uh, simulates the helm position on deck, uh, which consists of uh, a hydraulic pump connected to the wheel. The main connection between the helm pump and the steering gear is made by uh, hoses. This black manifold is the heart of the system. That's where all the switching uh, takes place to switch between uh, several gear ratios so that you'll always be able to steer the boat comfortably. Okay. Now, so that's the, a high medium, gear. Medium. You're, you're on the switch oh, yeah. now, switching to the, between the three gears. So that is a race mode now where you need big arms here. <laughs> Shall I take over from this side? <laughs> no, no, it's, it's good. Okay. That's the advantage with hydraulic, you can instantly take over. What you see in the, in the black box, yeah, that's our secret. I don't tell you, <laughs> but it is an, so simple yeah, that I don't want to tell you. <laughs> this is our secret. That secret in the black box saves the person steering the boat a lot of energy. And a high performance yacht uses a lot of energy. The air conditioning, the water heater, household equipment, hydraulic sailing equipment. There are many devices on board that need a lot of power. That power comes from batteries which are charged by generators. In Nederlijk, the Netherlands, a system has been developed to reduce the number of generators required to charge these batteries. Jasper, Manfred, heel eventjes. We are specialized in uh, electric systems on board ships. 
Uh, we have now a very lightweight battery. It's uh, very compact in size, but also very lightweight. It's um, about 10 times lighter than the regular lead acid batteries. Uh, with that and also industrial inverters, we can make a very uh, stable energy system for a ship and also be very lightweighted. This is the test facility in uh, our workshop. Here we uh, can prepare everything like the system that is on board. Uh, so we simulate a lot of things here, uh, just to make sure that once we install the system on board that everything is working. Normally you have, uh, in ships like this, you have an AC uh, switchboard. What we do, we centralize all the energy but on a direct current system. Normally a yacht runs at 70 kilowatts and has a peak power of 150 kilowatts coming from two generators. When power surpasses 90 kilowatts, the second generator starts. But because the power rarely exceeds 90 kilowatts, the first generator is underused and loses energy over time. With the new system, the first generator is set to a permanent standard of 90 kilowatts. All extra energy is now stored in the special batteries, so it can be used whenever needed. In the case of even higher power demands, the second generator can still be used to create instant kilowatts for the vessel. I think the battery set itself will be somewhere around 80,000 euros. And it looks like a lot of money, and it is a lot of money. But in the long run, the system that was desired for the Inui can only be done with these kinds of batteries. Coming up, the operation to join the two halves of the Inui is resumed, and the hull of the aluminium yacht 3067 has to be towed through Amsterdam's narrow canals. In Hype, on England's south coast, the attempt to join the two halves of the Inouye's hull continues. The top half of the carbon fibre superyacht is being carefully manoeuvred out of its shed. The slightest knock will damage it, and any repairs will need filling, adding unwanted weight to the high-performance vessel. You can feel the tension. Uh, it's quite narrow to move the whole boat between this shed and the building over there. Giant cranes are ready to haul the eight-ton top half of the super yacht into mid-air. I'm holding the front and you can bring the back end round. From there it has to be turned 180 degrees and then lowered onto the four-ton bottom half of the hull. Put it the right, the right slings for the... Yeah, it's, it's quite tight when we do the roll. Yeah. But um, as long as we um, have it low down on one side prior to doing the lift, there'll be enough travel to get the thing to go right the way over. I'd say that we're, uh, we're achieving what we want to. We've, we've got a few hours to go. Um, we've still got several processes to go through, especially the rollover. And then the crucial time will be when we join the two up. So we're gonna offer the hull bottom underneath and lower the other piece down on top. That's gonna be the interesting part of the afternoon. So the boat uh, has uh, got a moulding at the back near the cockpit and uh, there's a lot of vertical surfaces that have a lot of friction and they're providing resistance to release. The foredeck here is released already and at the back we've had to cut the sterling board in order to enable the boat to come free. And uh, literally a minute ago she finally lifted off after about an hour of trying. The top half is now ready to be rotated, a delicate task made even more fraught by strong winds. Yeah, I'm pleased, uh, pleased with the way it went. Yeah. Um, 
a little bit windy. Yeah. It's moving around more than I expected. Other than that, that's a pretty good rollover. Yeah. So we're going to truck her up and yeah. then move the strop. Okay. And then we'll lift her again. And then we can get the whole bottom underneath. To join the bottom and top parts of the hull means they have to fit like giant Lego parts. Each bulkhead needs to slide into the right slot, but the wind is making this near impossible. Because as soon as the keel tower is through the hull, then we can check the, the bulkheads if they fit. It will take eight hours for the two halves of the super yacht to be joined. In the weeks to come, the hull will be irreversibly sealed with glue and then baked in this shed, which is a giant oven. At the shipyard in Svatslaus, yacht builders Louis and Jan are meeting with Klaus, who represents the owner of the aluminium yacht 3067. Klaus has to be thorough. He was hired by the owner to supervise every aspect of the yacht's construction. His intervention can lead to some long and in-depth discussions. For this size of boat, it's very common. I don't know any project this size without an owner's represent. But it changed, in the, I must say, in the past, you know, in the, in the past, like it was very common even on smaller boats. But on this type of boat, where it's really everything is customized to the wishes of the client, it's quite normal. All the switches, all the details should oh, be in the mock Everything should be in the mock yeah. all the details will yeah. be in the mock yeah. They're always asking the limit. Uh, of course, you want to finish the project with a happy owner and a happy shipyard, and uh, I think there are really important for the project and also for the shipyard and the owner. We're ahead of schedule here, we're a little bit back of schedule there. Mm -hmm. No yeah. changes yeah. anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing is impossible, and, but there are often challenges and uh, in custom yacht building, I mean, that's what we do. We do every time new things, new innovations, things that haven't been done before. And our so biggest enemy is always, is always the time. It's not the owner, it is not, no, it's always time, time, time. The, the owner wants the boat on time. This is also a big challenge. But progress is being made. After a 40-man crew have grappled with over 80 tons of aluminium for the best part of a year, Yacht 3067's hull is finally ready. Now for this hull, it was a very tight schedule. This is a very special yacht. For instance, the keel. It is a retractable keel. We made a very uh, strong, thick aluminum box in which the keel can be lifted in. A hull like this, it is weighing approximately 60 tons and we used about 80 to 90 tons aluminum for it. The hull now needs to be transported to Smartslice for the next stage of the build, which means it has to be launched for the very first time. One of the risks is having a launch with heavy wind. When the wind is uh, over 604, it cannot be transported and, of course, uh, damaging the boat is, is, is one of the risks. With winds increasing to gale force 8, it's not easy to position the vessel, so everyone at the shipyard comes to the super yacht's aid. The idea is to simply tow the yacht to the home shed in Svatslaus, where the ship will be completed. But in order to get there, yacht 3067 will first have to find its way through the narrow canals of Amsterdam. You have to organize things there. It's, uh, channels are not that wide. You have to pass a few locks and, and bridges. So yes, it, it, it takes some organization to make sure that you are in time. That's always a critical part because you never know what happens. Uh, unexpected things might occur. For instance, today there's much more wind than was expected. So uh, it's, we still don't know if, if we can make uh, the crossing over the IJsselmeer. So that's, uh, that's still an uncertainty. The meticulously planned journey along the country's rivers and canals should take around three days, if the bridges open on schedule. Important boat, you see. Up to the volgende. Volgende boat. Yeah. Come on, jongens, we're going to go in. While yacht 3067 winds its way through Amsterdam, Louis feels the need for speed. After all, if you build high-performance superyachts, it'd be a shame not to race them. Purely for research, of 
course. And we're going to go to the, the Simbarts bucket, a uh, race between performance cruising yachts in the Caribbean and the island of Simbarts. Uh, it's important for us because, of course, you meet a lot of people, but it's most and for all important because you see the yachts perform and you see them, how they, how they act, how they react, how they're used. The bucket race allows Louis to see high-performance super yachts in action. It's an elite regatta. While boarding the Marie, Louis meets the rest of the crew, mostly sailors with a higher degree in competitive yacht racing. Some people come from the America's Cup, and we've got uh, also some ex-Olympic sailors on board, so uh, we've got a very good and um, competitive crew there. Okay, we have a lot of work to do today. We have to test the new jib sheets as far as the tensioners and there's new rope in there, so sometimes that could cause a problem if it doesn't milk out. Uh, light air jibes, that was our nemesis last week. When we jibed, the spinnaker filled inside the four triangle and everybody looked sad. So we have to work on that today. We're also gonna have a practice start. So I think the way to get the most out of the day is that we will uh, have a start at uh, 11.45. This is just practice, but the crew doesn't take it any less seriously than the real race. We don't have the, we don't have enough water to wipe the bow way down for the hoist. Andy, how do you want this to be done? To just keep the back. We had a make-believe start when we only got there two minutes early. So instead of turning around and making a big fuss, we just hoisted the spinnaker and took off anyway. And we discovered a problem about three quarters of the way through the practice. And uh, they took a quick look under the hood, as it were, to see what was going on. And it looks like there's a couple of parts, about ground up metal and things that may need some attention. Uh, the problem is one of the feeders, who uh, might have a bearing issue or something else, but we're investigating it right now. It could be a bearing, then we'll take it apart and uh, put a spare one in or get one. And uh, it's, it's all movable parts, it all can break, and, but it's all repairable. Coming up, the Inui is glued together, baked and shipped to the Netherlands. And the Marie is prepared for the race. Custom building, every detail of a super yacht is individually tailored to the owner's wishes, including the color. Most hulls are discrete variations on black or white, but the carbon fiber Inouye's is to be a subtle shade of luminous green. And the owner have this, this color in mind in very early stage, and by luck we find uh, the coffee capsule uh, matching the color, and we start from that. And this is the, one of the three colors we try to, to duplicate from, uh, from this capsule. Well, if we start from scratch, it will be uh, about uh, 10 layers. You need to, to primer the boat, to fair the boat, to, to, to cover the primer again, and then apply uh, a couple of layers of the, the final uh, top coat. As you can see, uh, we've painted the, the model mm -hmm. in the same color as the big sample we have uh, behind us. Beside the color, we have to consider the waterline and the striping. And uh, now I think we find the right combination of stripes. And uh, an anti-falling is integrated to this uh, choice and ready to show that to the owner, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. In the Caribbean, 250 kilometers east of Puerto Rico, an impressive number of mega yachts have gathered for the St. Baths Bucket Regatta. Maintaining these vessels can easily run up to a million euros a year or more. That's why even the private-owned ships are often being chartered. It's no budget vacation. For the costs to rent a ship like this with its crew for just one week, you could also own a Ferrari convertible. And fuel, food, drinks and harbor juice aren't included in the price. 
but this week is not about money. It's all about the race. For Louis, each race is a perfect opportunity to learn how he can improve his ships. The owner asked me, are, are, are you going to participate in the races with us? And I, I said, yes, of course. I mean, I thought it would be two or three. But then there were four per year, and uh, yeah. it was totally different than... Uh, but it was nice, it's nice. It's, 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 a, lot of, it's a lot of yeah, fun. Yeah. We've learned a heck of yeah, a lot yeah. by racing these yeah. boats. Having so many professionals on board is also really great. The Marine comes with some secret weapons you wouldn't expect on a sailing yacht. It has a grand piano in the main salon at Steinway. You can play the piano live, which we did on the races today. For the start and the finish, we were listening to Tchaikovsky. It's one of the few boats racing with a grand piano on board. Right. That's, uh... <laughs> <laughs> and not only yeah. a grand piano, also uh, three or four tons of uh, armory like uh, cannons and guns. Louis does a final check. He wants the Marie to perform her best, and during the test race, there was a problem with one of the feeders. But four crew members are on the case. So, well, we're here uh, at the bow of the boat, where, as you can see, a lot of work is going on now for uh, packing the spinnakers. So this is uh, the work currently going on. Actually, the nice thing about Marie is it's, it's a traditional boat. The traditional deck houses, they're aluminum cladded with, uh, with wood and there are quite a number of details in, in building something like this. Most of these things are underneath, but it's the way pieces are made, the, the way uh, things are done for taking the water away, so there's no standing water. There are all kinds of little, little details in there. Dimitri returns to England to see the Inui. The conjoined parts of the carbon fiber hull are being glued, polished and baked together. Precision is essential, as is the delivery schedule. Before we ship the hull to Holland, we want to fair the hull here and uh, cure it here in the, uh, the oven. Therefore, the stern door must be uh, installed and the crestbow should be applied. And that's yeah, our main concern for the moment. They are a little bit behind schedule, but hopefully we can uh, catch it up. To attach parts of the ship together, pieces of carbon fiber laminate are used. They are glued to the structure and later baked in the shed. The result is a solid and smooth surface. It's harder to determine whether the laminate quality is good or not. Purely because it's a black surface, you can't penetrate into it and see, whereas with glass fiber, you can often actually see the imperfections within the laminate, so it can be harder to determine. But we're using what we call non-destructive testing right now with um, ultrasound and shirography that can actually penetrate the surface and look at the laminate quality within. Any damage to the yacht would require filling, adding to the vessel's weight. But it can also cause unwanted alterations to the lines of the ship. Dimitri conducts a final inspection. At the moment, this is, this is definitely high in relation yeah. to the lines. You see, this line will be extended by the ferry process, yeah. so it comes up to here. Yeah. That means this door, will be longer as well. And then when the door opens, yeah, you might have to risk it. It, it clashes a bit. You need yeah. to find out. And therefore I like to, uh, to measure the distance later today. Mm. We built uh, two hull halves. We assembled the majority of the primary structure into one half and then we went through a process of joining the two together and now we have to do a lot of internal bonding work. It's gluing in the first instance and uh, yeah, the structural adhesives are very strong and the structural adhesive also is used to create a fair curve that you then apply reinforcement laminate to so it can turn a corner and go from a vertical surface onto a horizontal surface and that's the bonding. The boat will be finished within uh, around six weeks then it will be ready to ship to Holland where we continue with building. Right, for completion in the interior, the systems, electrics, hydraulics, painting, teak. Uh, oh, I'll be a little bit behind schedule, but we need to deliver the boat uh, within a year when the hull arrives at the yard. So therefore for us it's very important that this hull will be finished on time to ship to Holland. In the Netherlands, the engine for the Yacht 1967 is ready for delivery. With an engine for a high-performance yacht, it's always a compromise between power and weight. This engine produces 533 kilowatts at 
2100 revolutions per minute and weighs in at 1800 kilos, the weight of an average hippo. The standard engine comes from the United States. Then it's customized according to the owner's wishes. The yachting business, nothing is regular. So we customized the engine. We gave the whole engine a new uh, repaint job. That specific color the customer wants to have it. We also add some components to the engine. So in this case, we add uh, duplex filters. So you can change out the filters and do some maintenance while sailing uh, or motor maneuvering on the engine. In Schwarzlachs, the team eagerly awaits the engine's arrival. As soon as they too have given it a thorough inspection, the engine can be installed in the yacht. What we always are looking for is uh, drip trays like this, so to make sure that whenever there's a leakage or when, the, when they have to do an, uh, a filter change, uh, that no oil is, is spilled. Uh, what we also uh, customized are the, are the supports, so the engine supports, and uh, well, we've checked everything and everything that we want on is on, so it's a uh, yeah, happy with the result. Selecting a weak, heavy engine would be disastrous, so a lot of thought has been given on how to choose the perfect engine for the 3067. In design stage, the architect did a VPP uh, prediction. That's a graph uh, showing uh, the amount of, uh, of power needed for a certain speed. When we compared the fuel consumption, it appeared that we could uh, decrease the, the capacity of the fuel tanks uh, with a few tons. So that makes the boat lighter. So actually, this turned out to be the perfect fit for this project. Uh, next step is that we will put the, uh, the engine on board. The delivery is this complete with all the options that we requested that we can, uh, can hoist her on board, put her in the engine room, and it's actually uh, plug and play to the rest of the system. So it's, uh, it's an easy job. The hull of the Inui has finally arrived from England and is ready to be put on a freighter. The shipyard is a month behind schedule on the build of this carbon fiber vessel and wants to start the finishing work as soon as possible. But the local waterways in the Netherlands are not quite navigable by a super yacht. This morning we lift the hull outside uh, the belly of a cargo ship. Then the coaster will move uh, off the quay. The pontoon of the barge with the cradle the inner is going to be placed on, positioned under the hull and the hull lifted on top of the, the cradle. Two immense cranes will load the 33 meter carbon fiber yacht onto a pontoon. The operations can be uh, difficult. The weather can be uh, have quite some impact on the uh, the operation of uh, lifting and transporting uh, the hull, because if it's really uh, a lot of wind, it uh, yeah it, it might cancel the the operation. But as you see today, it's really uh, almost no wind, sunny. It, uh, it looks good. It's well prepared. So perfect. Well, one of the most exciting moments is when the hull comes out of the coaster. So you see they're in full, full length, hanging uh, high in the air. And the other thing is when she, uh, if she fits on the, the jocks we prepared. To build a boat like this is uh, very complex. The next step is that we're gonna bring the hull inside the shed tomorrow so we can, uh, can start with the outfitting of the systems and the uh, installation of the interior and finish uh, the rest of the fairing system and the paint system. Next, the two super yachts approach completion and Louis stops practicing and starts racing for real. all parties involved to discuss the completion of the super yacht, the Inui. It has to be thoroughly soundproofed while remaining as light as possible, a difficult balancing act. We're discussing about sound insulation. We're discussing over the weight. This is the lightweight panel with the foam in it. These are the sound reducing panels. What material can we use for the floors and especially for the walls? Uh, this is a full rubber yeah. and this is a, co a combination of cork 
core purple. Yeah. With the same. So it's a it's a lightweight. It's uh, from sound reducing. But if you feel the the, the 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 difference. Oh yeah. This factory in the village of Vaudsend uses wood from around the world to make soundproofing mounting plates. We have a lot of different kinds of panels here in stock, like plywood, blockboard, MDF, uh, all different thicknesses and measurements. The customer chose for this foam uh, because it's very light. It's, uh, it's about 60 kilos uh, per cubic meter. It's uh, very stiff and, uh, and easy to handle. We use an extremely thin uh, plywood from one and a half millimeter. Here we clean the panel, we heat the panel, we glue the panel, and here we press the panel so that we make a sandwich panel. The next is we cut the panel in the size what they want, and then it goes to the interior maker. In Germany, work continues on the Enoe's interior. Weight has to be kept to a minimum that the immaculate finish requires 150 square meters of veneer. The big challenge in this project is to have a super lightweight interior uh, according to the highest possible yacht interior standard. During the design phase, five people are assigned to the project. Once the materials have been sourced and production begins, this rises to 20 people. Work then lasts for two years. If we have the base material, then we will apply the veneer on top of this, of this foam. By using the foam as a core material, we are already saving about 40 to 50% of the normal weight compared to wood. If we have the possibility and if the construction allows us, we can also drill extra holes into the foam in order to save even more weight. Plans on a scale of one to 10 are produced. Every space is laid out in detail. Walls, floors, colors, sizes, down to the last millimeter. With this much planning, the super yacht should not be a single gram overweight. And at the end, the weight is fixed into the contract. It also has a penalty clause. So if we are over the weight, we have to pay a penalty. The margins, of course, we have always have to deal with margins. Margins are approximately up and down 10%. People from all disciplines are working together to achieve this project because it is a custom-made part. The climate control aboard the yacht 3067 needs attention. At the moment, the fresh air unit is causing a bit of an obstruction. It's in the way of the bilge valve that regulates the excess water drainage. There is a problem here by the by the aansluiting of the fresh air unit. Yeah. Sea water is cooled and then transferred to the fresh air unit, which uses a series of filters to ensure temperatures on board are as comfortable as possible. We have to do the changes both in our fabric during the building process and of course on board we have also sometimes to do the final adjustments to make the unit fit. The aansluiting staat keurig op teken aan deze kant en als we merken de verbinding um, hier langs naar die uh, kast, dan hebben we de bereikbaarheid van deze helemaal geblokkeerd. Uh, the solution in this case is that we are going to move the, uh, the ducting between the two parts of the fresh air unit and uh, by, mo by moving it uh, under one of the parts, so out of the way, uh, giving access to the to the bilge valve. Nou, gaan we het zo doen, jongens? Ja, hartstikke goed. It's finally time for the engine to be installed on the yacht 3067, a build which has absolutely absorbed the shipyard. There are, I think, on the moment, 60 people working non-stop on it, and it will be uh, on the end a little bit more. The winches are hidden below deck. For yacht 3067, they chose a light and compact windlass system to weigh the anchor. 
Weight savings are fairly critical, obviously, to a sailing yacht to try to maintain uh, high average speeds. So, yeah, weight is quite a critical component. The anchor is made of stainless steel marine bronze. It's a durable material and it works well with the winches. The controls are custom made for installation below deck, an important asset for yachts with an unbroken upper deck called flush deckers. It's a hydraulic windlass system, which is the most durable in a saltwater environment um, compared to electric. I think it's going to be a, a great solution on this type of yacht with the great requirement for a sleek uh, flush deck. It's, it's going to be a good problem solver for them. Back in St. Baths, the super yacht race is about to begin. Louis and his crew are on board the Marie with some former Olympic sailors. The owner asked me during the construction whether I wanted to be crew on board. And I committed, I said, yes, I'll do that. And so I'll be uh, with, the, with the racing crew participating on board. We'll be ready. Oh yeah, and we, have, we have some guys on the crew, we actually have to chain them up before the race. They're so eager to go. We just have to tie them down, chain them up, their enthusiasm builds up, and then we break them loose right at just before the start. Fire out into battle. We're 19 minutes to start, probably running a little bit behind, so we're going to keep the main engine engaged and just try and get up above the line, but this would definitely be late. We need uh, Ford X got to know that. So I'd be happy you could you could go into your turn up here, no problem, Trevor. Happy. A real race is the ultimate test for a high performance yacht. We had a beautiful day, we had good sailing, we have uh, good results. It's uh, nothing broke, everything stuck together, everything is still working as it should be. All right guys, it's been a great race. Sorry that we crushed them like bugs, but it's what we do. All right, hip hip, here's for Ed. All right. This is the first boat where we have the cannons on board. and. When the owner came with the cannons, we were quite surprised because they were they were all 16th, 17th century cannons, and um, but also weight, there was a lot of weight involved. So we were kind of uh, amazed by the by the cannons when they came. You know, we want to perform. We have a grand piano, and we have three tons of cannons on board. So. <laughs> Fire in the hole! The race is finished, and in the Netherlands, the carbon fiber yacht the Inui is nearing completion as well. We started with uh, the outfitting of the technical systems. Uh, within two months, we start with the installation of the interior, so still on, on schedule. In the other shed, the aluminium yacht 3067 is also right on schedule. We are actually good on schedule. Painter is well on the way with, with, with fairing off the hull. Uh, a lot of systems uh, are in the boat already. We are on schedule and we are uh, ready to launch her uh, next summer. Even though full completion of both ships will take another year, more innovative ideas for a new generation vessels are already on the rise. I think we, we must do more innovation about lightweight. Yeah, we must think about uh, yeah, that we need less power for higher speed. For centuries, sailing yachts mastered the oceans, explored the earth and changed the course of history forever. And now in the 21st century, they have become far from obsolete. Instead, super light, super efficient, super sailing yachts revolutionize the very idea of yacht building.